So midterm is going to be on the lab before the study break, in the lab before the study break. If something hits the fan and we can't do it like the computer go by, you know, you see every time what happens in here, okay? So at that time, I'm, I don't need to project anything because you're just going to come over here. So you're going to have a demo test coming up. Come to the lab, practice it, and see how you have to do it. So a demo test is there, and I'm asking you to exactly do it in a certain way. I'm very picky and extremely, like stu other students hate me on that, and hopefully you're going to love me for that. But what I do is that this is how the test happens. You open two applications. You open Microsoft Edge. You open Notepad++. You save that Notepad++ file that it opens as .cpp file. That gives you syntax highlighting, IntelliSense, and all the things that you can type. Okay? So when you see the programming question, you answer in Notepad++, and you keep pasting it there as code. I'm going to put the demo video up and the test demo test so you can see it. If you submit a code to me that is not properly indented or it's not syntax highlighted, I simply don't mark it, zero. No partial marks. I'm not going to even look at it, okay? So you have to do that. You are at the stage and you need to be able to code properly. That's one of the requirements of this subject. So that's it. All of, I'm giving you the tool to do it. So you simply go over there. You're at, it's actually better for you than that crappy thingy on that one. So you simply program on that and do it on here and submit it and you're done, okay? Uh, the, the, the questions that's going to be, again, it's going to be a perfect announcement for you to exact detail that on what the questions are going to be. At. I almost tell you what the questions are because statistically never made any difference. One semester, I actually gave the question to students the day before and the next day I gave that questions to answer exact same marks doesn't make any difference okay if you know the questions and you are on your own and your friend is not helping it doesn't make any difference okay so I'm gonna give you the detailed information of what are but these are the types of questions you're gonna get you're gonna get exactly the same thing that you have in quizzes that's for the concept what it's around 15 20 percent 25 percent of the mark that's that one then after that's gonna be a walkthrough which is essentially generates three characters, four characters of following the code. Then it's going to be programming. And programming, I'm going to give you a scenario. I'll give you code to reuse, so, or I'll give you something to complete. Rarely I'll give you a full program to write. I'm going to tell you this class exists, do its constructor. This class exists, do this operator overload. Things like that. And you only do that part. One thing that I want to beg you, I, if it, the floor wasn't dirty, I would go on my knees and ask you, beg you, read the questions before you answer. One of the most important is that unrelated answers have a mark of zero, which means if I ask you to create a class for an employee, you create a perfect class for a student, you get zero. I, oh, but other than that, a semicolon will even get you marks. If you answer the question, if I ask you to create a class employee, you write class employee. That's it. Nothing else. That gets you marks. Okay? So everything has partial marks if you answer my question. If I told you, can I have a coffee? You give me a, I don't know, glass of whiskey. That's not going to work out for me. I want coffee. You follow what I'm saying? Although whiskey is much better. You follow what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. So you have to answer the question. And then you get the marks. That's all. It's very simple, and actually, after doing it, students like it because uh, note that plus plus literally is like it, it, it actually helps you complete this stuff. You don't need to remember how to do the, you know, anyways. That's that. <clears throat> so now that we are that have that one, we're going to do a quick review on what we've done before, and I'm going to start uh, doing more um, overloading, uh, operator overloading, and other types of things so you know how they work. Okay, <clears throat> there is one important thing that you need to remember before we begin. There are many ways of doing the same thing. There are many ways of doing the same thing. <clears throat> so throughout all these operator overload stuff that we are doing, some of them may cause conflict because overloading one operator 
can be used for an operator that is not overloaded. Okay? And when you do them both, the compiler says, hey, if you already did that. That covers this one. You don't need to do it. So there are many ways of doing the same thing. Be careful about it. <clears throat> okay. All right. So <clears throat> we said that we have many types of operators. And uh, the operators can be member binary operators with no side effect, which, is, which we do not have an example of yet. We don't have any examples of a member binary operators that like that. <clears throat> For that, we need to uh, teach few things so to be able to actually do that. Um, <clears throat> Um, binary operators. Uh, we have uh, uh, member binary operators with no side effect. We have uh, binary operators with side effect, uh, uh, which essentially they are uh, they they change the left hand operator. We said all the left hand operators must initially be considered. As, mem as owners of the operation. So whatever the left-hand operator is, that's the class that owns the, the, uh, the operator. And the right hand is one argument that the operator receives, and that's how we do it. So if we are doing plus equal, we're going to say B type operator plus, and the right one is what is being passed to it. The owner is the left operand. What it returns is what it returns, what the result of the operation. That's how we did it. And we said there are many different ways to do the same thing, depending on what your business logic is and what you are basing your program on. Then we talked about unary operators. And we said unary operators uh, <clears throat> belong to the, to the operand they are affecting on. And we said that when you create unary operators, Did we talk about how to write a postfix? Or it was the other class? <coughs> yes. So we said unary operators, they're all prefix except from two of them, that is plus plus and minus minus. And because it was a weird thing, they created the weird signature for it. So when you want to implement an, a unary operator that is postfix, you have to put an int over there just to indicate that this is a postfix one. OK? <clears throat> Today I'm telling you that. All operators, like I showed you for the operator that we have over here, could be non-members. Every single operator that you create, they can be created as non-member operators perfectly. But the problem is that that's not object-oriented. So let's not do it unless we have to. In our lectures, we are going to learn about uh, what we call friend functions. Friends are in object orientation are for knife in a back, which means are worse things to have. You never want to have friends in object orientation. Friends is when you give the key of your house to your friend to water the plants when you are out for a trip, and you come back and you see your golden necklace is gone. And, and you're going to say, and the best friend of your BFF suddenly becomes a thief. So it's better not to do that, right? So that's what it is. You don't give hand in the access to your class to a function to be able to do whatever they want without control. So I'm not even explaining how to do it, OK? Uh, when the time comes, maybe, uh, just for you to know. But in my opinion, if you create a friend function, a friend that is not a member, but have access to all the private parts of the class, that's bad design. So you uh, simply uh, was too lazy to create a query and access to query instead. So any friendship is resolved with a query. What is a query? Who's going to answer? What is a query? So that uh, a function that not modifies the yeah, the function that doesn't modify the class. So what does it do? Uh, the state of the 
gives us, gives us the state, gives us the information about our class. And that's why we are making it brand. Because we want to do some, we want to get something from, or we want to change something. If we want to change something to a class, what do we call that method? Modifier, modifier mutator, whatever you call it, right? So you can create a modifier class, modifier uh, uh, method that with control and observation changes the properties of the class, and you can call that one instead. So friends are really unnecessary, okay? Friends in object orientation, Again, I'm not telling you what the syntax is. I'm just telling you uh, what I'm about to teach in future. Because when you look at helper functions, the friend is taught in there. If you look at the member uh, helper functions uh, note, they explain what friend is. We don't use it in my class. What are friends for? Any of you have a pet? Anyone over here has a dog at home? I have a dog. Name is Coco, and I love her to death. She's like my daughter. I love her. OK? OK, so uh, am I my friend? No. I can take her to vet, put her down tomorrow. That's not friendship. That's ownership. We call it friends because we are kind. That's C++. With C++, using the friend keyword, you implement ownership. You're going to learn it. For example, I want to create a class called array, and I want the array to have elements. An array has elements, right? An element can be a class. An array can be a class. Can an element exist without a class, without a, an array? No. So the class element should not be created by anyone but the array, right? So we make the array class friend of element, which means it is owner. And we can make everything private in it. So nobody can touch it. Nobody can instantiate it other than an array. So that's what friendship is in, in C++. Because we are going there, when you read it, remember in future, I'm going to teach you how to implement French, uh, friendship, which is essentially ownership. They should have called it owner. I don't know why they called it a friend. Because it really owns it. To whoever you give the key to your house, they own it. That's reality. <clears throat> are we good? So no talking about friends in this class for now. Uh, we're just going to go about it like this. We're going to talk about <clears throat> some special functions that we're going to teach uh, in the last week. But because I am teaching stuff over here, I have to explain uh, uh, a few important things. <clears throat> One of them you already know. You see this? No, no, no. You see this. This is an operator equal that I overloaded. You, you did it comfortably, and there, we had no problem with it, right? Why did we create that operator equal? That operator equal, if we don't create it, operator equal, if you don't create it, you can always set an, an object to another object of the same type. It doesn't matter what it is. You can create a class employee, and you say you can say employee A, and then you can say A, and employee B, and you can say A is set to B. You don't need to implement anything. Because they are identical, compiler takes a Xerox copy of one and attaches it to the, to the other one. This works fine for when your classes don't have any resources. They don't have any pointers to outside. If your class is pointing, if your class is holding its data outside of its scope in memory, these type of copying, what does it do? It only copies the class. The memory is not copied, right? Then everything gets screwed up. We don't want that. <clears throat> so because of that fact, so just to tell you what, how it works, I'm going to pause. What I was saying was this. I'm recording right here. So take a look at this. We have, what does it have? It has some data, and data is outside of the class, right? So that the class A and B, two of them, two different ones. Are we OK with this? Now, what I'm going to do over here is simply say something like B is equal to A. When I do that, what does the compiler do? 
the compiler simply gets everything that it has in A and copies it in B, correct? So what's going to happen? Essentially, what happens would be this. You see? This is going to point to that, and this is lost. Because now they are pointing both to what A had. And this is overwritten. That's why we overload the assignment. So when you do something like this, and then what happens? When the first one is going out of stove, the, discuss, the destructor is called, the memory leak set aside. The first one's destructor is called, and the destructor wipes out the memory. We did that, right? And then after this is gone, when the next one, the next one remains with nothing. Because they're sharing the memory, and when the destructor is called, poof, it crashes. So when your program crashes at the end, that means what you have done. Because it doesn't know what's going on. They are both pointing at the same place. It doesn't know. But when go on goes, it destroys it, and the second one, that happens. So how do we fix this problem? We did it already with our assignment operator overload. So to actually do good assignment, what we do is this. When we have such a thing, when assignment happens, we overload the assignment operator. When you overload something, what does it mean? Hey, I'm taking control. You don't touch it. C looks at it. C++ looks at it says, oh, assignment operator is overloaded. So instead of just blindly copy it, I'm going to go to what is created for me as custom. So when assignment happens, before anything happens in our allo copy, we delete the target to make sure it's not overwritten. Then we measure to see what is the, and when it goes like that, we measure to see what is the size of the other one. We allocate everything for it, and one by one we copy everything from the old one to new one. The things compiler don't do. And then after it's done, we copy the size and we have two objects separately. One gets destroyed, perfect, and the second one gets destroyed, nothing goes wrong and everything is good. You follow? That we did with our assignment. The assignment operator, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just teaching operator overloading, right? But there is another problem that we don't, we are not aware of it. The other problem is the action of copying. Whenever you pass something by value, the content gets copied, right? That's why we say use references. Remember that? That's why we said, in, in, I, in IPC 144, we said, always pass the structures with address. Why? Because a structure is a big thing. When you just create an argument with the same size, the whole con a new structure is created, the whole content is copied and then reused, right? When you're using a pointer, it's just the address. So you don't lose much memory. The problem with uh, copying is that when you actually are doing copying, when you copy something, when you leave it to the compiler, if you don't have any resources in your class, you can leave it to the compiler. We don't care. I don't have anything outside of my class. Let the compiler copy it. And compiler brings everything from the old one to the new one because everything is inside the scope of the class. But when we don't have that one, when our class is something like this, and I create a copy out of it for, in any case, if I do assignment at the moment of creation, that's copying, right? It's initialization. Or if I create a class using an already existing class, what happens? It creates a new one and copies everything. But not everything, because it doesn't know there is something outside. It simply copies everything over. And when it does it like that, again, the same thing happens as if you did with the assignment. So when you do this, program works perfectly. You see both have, so when you print B, it prints that one. When you print A, it prints that one. So you think everything is good. But if you change A, you see B is changed too, because they are pointing to the same place. And even worse than that, when B goes out of scope, it takes the memory out with it. And when the second one goes, then the crash is going to happen, right? So we should take over that copying too. We should take over copying. When does copying happen? When a new object is created using the data of another object, right? I say when a new object is created 
what is being called? Constructor, right? So all we need to do is to create a constructor that accepts an object of the same call type and tell to the operating system, don't do it. It's just a constructor. We've done it 50 times. The only difference is that instead of passing arguments, the argument you are passing to a constructor is just the object of the same type. That's it. And when you actually do that, when you actually do that, This is what's going to happen. So you actually implement it in a way so when the copying happens, it actually, like assignment operator, it actually measures the data of the other one, brings all the information in, and copies everything properly. And when it's gone, everything is good with no memory leak. And how do we do it? It takes three seconds. Take a look at this, my string of mine. I created all these constructors, right? All I need to do is to say over here, my str, and I put over here constant, my str reference, whatever. What am I going to write? Uh, uh, to copy. Right? I'm copying that. That's all. So then what am I going to do? Now let's take a look at this. When I copy, I have to follow the rule of dynamic memory allocation. What is that? The pointer should be null, right? So I'll do that. So I'm going to say m data is null PTR. That's taken care of. So I have my, my class uh, new and nice and beautifully set. OK? Now what do I need to do? Didn't they just create an assignment operator for it? And that takes care of everything, right? Because this is already null, if it's deleted, I don't care. Nothing's going to happen. So all I need to do is to say, done. Now I'm safe. <coughs> of course, I, could, I can do all the things that I told you. But we already did it into allo copy. If you, you want me to do it manually too to see how it works? OK, let's do it. So to do it manually, it's simple. You say m data is set to new uh, character. Now, it could be an array. In this case, it's a character array. It could be an array of cars in a parking. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to say in here, because it's, it doesn't have a size, I just do an SDR len, ut.str. Do I have utils over here? Why is it not seeing my utils? New character, uh, ut dot. Is it the strlen in uts? Do we have that? Yeah, it's strlen. So ut strlen. And then in here, I'll put the two copies dot m data plus one. OK, <laughs> so I allocate memory. Then I'm going to say UTSDR copy into M data, the two copies M data. I think that's it. I don't, like, it's, it's as simple as that. Because it's a constructor, it's a fresh object, right? I don't have to worry about anything in here. Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK, everyone? There is one thing wrong with our uh, assignment, though. Not that one. The other assignment. So uh, we OK with this? Do we understand this? All I did is just copied everything. I said my M data will have the memory to the size of the other one. Now. If the other one is null, I'm going to have be in trouble, right? So that I have to fix. So in here, I'm going to say if the other one is not null, do it. So, so I'm going to say if uh, to copy m data is not null. So I just want to make sure. And because I originally make it null, if it's null, this one is going to be null too. So perfect copy. So that's, I think, good. 
Anybody thinks anything wrong with this? Are we good? Looks OK? Can you, can you spring the colon and data This one? Yeah. That's initializing the, because my string has, my string has a, a, a property, right? I want to make sure that that is null when the constructor begins its work. And we mentioned we have a place that I told you you cannot Google it. It's what I call it. We call this initialization area, which is between the closed curly uh, parentheses of the constructor and open curly bracket. You can initialize all the member variables and contents of the class in there. And that happens to be, uh, and curly bracket is the universal way. Yeah, a single code, like the other one, like the other one, like the other one. You put a comma, and next one. OK? You separate as much as, much as you want. It doesn't make any difference, OK? There is one problem over here with our assignment for, a, for another one. You see that? We forgot. So this, this uh, copies another uh, MSDR with assignment. So this is called copy assignment, by the way. The standard name for this one is copy assignment. The standard name for that constructor is called copy constructor because its job is to copy another thing. We forgot our stupidity. When I say we forgot our stupidity is that when you write something, it should be foolproof. What if somebody assigns something to itself? It's going to delete the current thing, try to copy the other one. It goes bananas, right? Because compiler doesn't know. So we have to make sure that doesn't happen. So in here, I have to say, first of all, forget about that return thingy over there. In here, before anything happens, I have to say, if the address of me is not equal to the address, is not equal to the address of what I'm copying, do this, which means if the, both objects are the same, my address and what I'm copying is the same, right? We are same location in memory. If that's the case, don't do it. So prevent self-copying. If I say string A, then I say A is equal to A, it's just not going to do anything. And then at the end, I'm going to say return this. So this is standard copy assignment. And this is standard copy constructor. which can be shortened by just calling the assignment operator. As calling the assignment operator over here is very easy, as long as you follow the rule of setting everything to null. So it doesn't crash. You can always call that to reuse your code. But I just did it so you know. So this copy constructor, copy assignment is done. Now it's safe. Now I can actually overload anything I want. Because if by mistake you pass, or by force, you have to pass a string by value somewhere else, Everything's going to explode, right? Because copying causes memory leak and crash and everything. Because I handle this and copy assignment, I'm good. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is called rule of three. Rule of three. They say if you have a class and your class has resources outside of its scope, you must implement Rule of three. What's rule of three? Copy constructor. Copy assignment, destructor. These three must be implemented. Otherwise, your class will crash. There is no question about it. OK? You, can, you have to somehow take care of it. If you don't want copying to happen, you have to prevent it. You can actually create a, constructor in a private, copy constructor in a private section and just leave it empty, which means it's private. Nobody can call it. It prevents copying. Or there are other methods that we're going to go through. We don't, when the time comes, we'll talk about it. So now we know. So rule of three, rule of three, outside of, his, uh, outside of his scope in any way. You must handle copy construction, copy assignment, and, destruct, and destruction to make sure everything is done properly. And when OP345, it's going to change to rule of five. Now it's rule of three. OK?
So now I can continue. Are we okay with that to this point? So now I can actually, I can actually do that. I'm going to actually remove it and show it to you that it's going to fail like crazy. So where is my main? So a simple, innocent thing like this. Let me take this OF stream stuff out of here. We don't need this. So if I just do this, take a look. I say void print SDR, OK? And in here, I say my SDR uh, S. I think we overloaded the, the, the C out, right? So I can say C out S. I think we did that, right? I just do something like this. Very innocent, very normal thing to do, right? And then in here, I'll say, Uh, my string uh, s uh, mm, a, and I'm gonna set it. This is a test for a string to be printed. Okay, so I do that. So what is called at line ten? It is initialization, which is a constructor which has one argument. What is the type of that argument? Constant character pointer. OK? So remember, when we did that, assignment at the moment of creation is not assignment. It's initialization. Initialization is a constructor, and whatever it receives over there, that's that. OK? So now I will say over here, print str and I'm going to put a. When you call a function, remember I told you how functions are called in C? I explained it. So when it's called, what does it do? It calls prn print str my str s set to a, right? That's how the function is called. I have assignment at the moment of creation. It is constructor. It has one argument. What is that argument? Another my string. Therefore, copy construction. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, put it at left, put it at right. So when it actually runs, this is created using the one argument constructor we talked about. It does the allo copy and all the good stuff. Comes out. Now printing wants to happen. As soon as printing wants to happen, see where it goes? To the copy constructor. And in that copy constructor, it checks to see if the data is null. It's not. It allocates enough memory for it, copies it, and comes out. And now goes into and prints it out. And when it comes out, that S is going to die because it's a local variable. So it goes to the destructor, and that thing is deleted. And then it comes out, and now another destructor is called, with the, which is the original A, and dies. Right? When I, I run this, and it works perfectly, and everything's beautifully done. So when it goes, it finished and everything. Now take a look. I'm coming over here. I'm going to comment the copy constructor and comment the copy constructor over here. Where is the copy constructor? OK. When I run it, no problem. Why? Because if I do not implement it, it's going to copy it anyway. What the heck? What is that? Let me just maximize that. I think I made a boo boo solver. What did I do? Why is it giving me an, an error? Wait a minute. Stop. Rebuild. Yes. Build. Uh, 
Where did that arrow come from? Uh, anyways, let's do it. So I'm going to press F10 and run it, right? So it comes over here. There is no problem. Because compiler says you have two classes, same classes. You are passing the exact same thing, no problem. So what it's going to do over here is this. It runs it, oh, and goes in here. And no constructor, nothing is called. It directly goes into it. You see that? And if you look at S, S actually has the value in it. What you are not aware of, that that value doesn't belong to S. It's A's value. So it actually prints it. Life is beautiful. Then it goes to the destructor. What happens? It deletes that. You come out. Now you look at A. A has all garbage in it because its data is deleted by the other one. And when the destructor is called over here, that's when you're going to get the error message. Hey, what the heck? And that's where Val, Val Green's going to go, you did, you went bananas. Oh, so you know what I mean. So I'm saying, what I'm saying is that in short, whenever you have a class with resource, you have to follow the rule of three. Otherwise, you're going to be in big trouble. OK? So I'm going to bring it back. And then we are going to continue with our operator overload because now I can freely create whatever I want without any memory leak or any crashes because the rule of three is actually applied. Are we okay? Fast ends at 25 or 30? 25. No break. I have 20 minutes. I'm not going to waste it. Okay? So. We started late, right? So. so now let's come back over here and check something else. So that was. And copy, copy constructor is called in many different ways. You pass anything by value, copy constructor. You return anything by value, copy constructor. You set one object to another object at the moment of creation, copy constructor. If you set one, one class to another, that's copy assignment, completely different thing. That's not initialization anymore. Are we good? Are we good? Any question one? Are we good? Sure? Your face didn't say I'm good. You're like, <laughs> you're good? OK. All right. So now that we have done this, uh, I'm going to say over here, copy test. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. A. Copy test. OK. We could have actually done this, too, to make sure everything is good. That checks, make sure that the copy assignment is not done badly. OK? So yeah, so we could have done this like that. Checks copy assignment. Checks copy constructor. OK? Back in business. Now, what if I want to do this, ladies and gents? I have name, Fred. I have What is called at line 10? What is called at line 10? I'm going to ask this 50,000 times. Say it out loud. What is called at line 10? Constructor. Which one? One argument constructor. Remember that? What is the type of argument? Constant character pointer. So now I want to have this. My SDR full name. And I want to do this. Yeah, I want to do this. I want to say full name is equal to name plus surname. Right? What is the logic behind this? This plus is not supposed to have any side effect, right? Name should remain name, so they sh uh, surname should remain su surname, right? But it has to return a string, right? So what does it have to return? 
because it's neither name nor surname, it has to create a new one and return it. Correct? So let's implement it. How do I do it? Again, first you try to do it member. If you couldn't, then you do non-member. The left one is a class, and I have access to a source code. This is not going to be a non-member. I'm going to enforce everything that it's supposed to do. So I'm going to come over here in the, the dot .h thingy that we have, and I'm going to put it right over here. So, so I'm going to say my, my SDR, first of all, I cannot return a reference because this object is nowhere. I'm just creating it out of thin air and returning it. This is not left upper and or right upper. I have to create a new object that is full name and return it, right? So I cannot return the reference. At right side, I am receiving a string, correct? So what am I going to say? I'm going to say my a constant, because I'm not supposed to change it, my SDR reference uh, right operand. Correct? Left operand is the owner, right? How can I enforce so it doesn't change the left operand? I put a const over there. Right? So now, this is a binary operator that doesn't change the left or right with no side effect. Let's implement it. As you see, it's telling you that you have to return a new object. <laughs> okay? So I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to say my SDR, um, I'm going to call it RET that I'm supposed to return. And the good thing is now I have copy constructor, right? So I can say equals to this. What happens? It creates a ret that is a copy of me. Correct? Now all I have to do is to concatenate the second one to this one. I've already written that. So in here I'm going to say ret plus equal right operand. Correct? Why did I call it res? Anybody? OK. Oh, result is not bad. My brain tells me ret is not good. So result plus equal ret, that's going to that's gonna be the full name, right? All I need to do is to return it. Do I need to care if it's going to be by uh, copied or not? No. I have a copy constructor that takes care of everything. Done. Right? I don't think there's any trouble in here. It works perfectly. So now I'm going to have full name over here. So now if I run the program, it's going to have the first name and last name and yada, yada, yada. I should have printed this too. I'm just printing it. It's going to recompile, hopefully. It did. So now plus is being called. It comes to plus. It doesn't change left. It goes to the copy constructor, copies that one, so result becomes Fred and a space. Now it does plus equal. We've already, and you see it's jumping to the back, to the end, <laughs> and then coming over here. Ten years ago, it wouldn't do that. Ten years ago, it would do it complete, and then it would copy this and return it. Well, because the compiler is becoming more efficient, it tells me you already created something. You already made a copy. I'm just going to return that one. I'm not going to make another copy out of it. That's why it comes first to return, then to your action. My apologies. That's how it works. Anyways, it comes up over here. And then in, from here, it goes there and does the plus equal with the M data of the other one that is Soleil. And now it returns it and comes back over here and as you see, the assignment operator is called now because at right side, I have a nameless object coming, right? I just re it. At left side, I have an, S, an S3. So that nameless object 
has to get assigned to this one. That, that full name should get assigned to the nameless. So it comes now, the right side, I have the full name. Let me come in. You see? And it's being copied into the left one. So that's the nameless one. The nameless one is copied, but before it comes out of here, that nameless is not used anymore, right? Dies. So as soon as this is done, before the semicolon is over, it's going to kill that nameless. Take a look. It goes, delete that nameless. What is the nameless? Fred Soleil. Deletes the nameless, comes out, and prints the full name, and everything is good. So just a little plus. See how many things happen behind the scene? That's why they say, implement the rule of three and forget it. You don't need to care about how many things are called behind the scene. As long as you create the rule of three properly, you can just return whatever you want, and compiler will take care of the problem for you. Are we good? Are we OK? Now the next one. What if I wanted to do, so that full name is printed, we know. What if I wanted to do this? What if I wanted to say, full name is set to uh, Frank plus surname. Uh, what if I wanted to do this? At left side, I have constant character pointer. At right side, I have this. Is this an object? Can plus be member of that? I am forced to create a helper function. OK? So now I'm going to come back over here into, the, into my string, and I'm going to bring it out now. I'm going to say, OK, it's going to return a my string. Obviously, it's not going to be referenced because, again, it's created out of thin air. And then what it needs to do over here to become an operator plus at left side, it's going to receive a constant character pointer C string, correct? And at right side, it's going to get a constant mysdr reference. What is that? Uh, reference uh, uh, right hand, right operator, right? Correct? Yeah. You will see that in this case, maybe it's better not to do this. Have this a copy. Because when I go inside, I have to create a new one, right? Now, ah, forget it. <laughs> Too much of process. I don't want to do that. So now it's created. So now I'm going to do something crazy. Uh, actually, no, forget it. So I just have uh, like 50 things come to my mind. My SDR, let's do it standard. So this is result. And the result will be equal to C string. We have done that already, right? So what is called at line 80? What is called at line 80? Constructor. One argument construct that receives a, we have it, right? Now I'm going to do result plus equal right. and return result. And now, my program will work perfectly. Ta -da. See, we are getting closer. Our, our, just remember the day one, how did we create that thing? It's getting very, it looks like a regular variable now, when you think about it. Integer a is equal to 2, right? It's actually working. So soon, if you make everything set in this one properly, then you don't need to. You can actually use this for all your purposes, and in, in you can use it as a utility to do whatever you want to do. Instead of using C string, you can use this one, actually. OK? One more thing we need to learn. What if I want to do this? Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a tough one, but let's do it. What if I have a 
an old-fashioned type of a string for some reason, character uh, C full name, and I put over here 90 characters, let's say. And I want to do this for some unknown reason. I want to say SDR copy into C full name, the full name. I want to be able to do something so string copy can get the thing that I've got to this one and copy to that one. For this to happen, what should, be, what should the compiler be able to do? What is the second argument of SDR copy? No, no, what is that? Like when you are doing a string copy, the first argument is a character array. What is the second argument in regular one, not this one? It's a character array? No, it's a special type of character array. It's a constant, constant C string at right side. It's the constant character pointer, right? So the compiler should be able to convert this to a constant character pointer. What is conversion called in C? If you want to convert a double to an integer, you cast it. So I need to overload the casting. So I'm going to come over here and I say, hey, if they wanted to cast this to a constant character pointer, do this. As you see, this operator doesn't have any return type. Why? Because it is the return type. It is telling that it's going to return a constant character pointer. It is the result of a cast. That tells if somebody wants to cast me to a constant character pointer, this must happen. Why do I have the const? To make sure it's not going to change anything. It just access the data. And in here, I'm simply going to say return m data. Done. Ta -da. So what happens now when it comes in here, when it comes in here, it says, I have to cast this to a constant character pointer. Do I have the overload for it? Yes, I do. So it's going to call that one. And now the C full name becomes a legacy type of C full name. And I'm going to do something else after that. So, and L. So, when we do this, when it comes over here, when it comes over here, all those good stuff are happening. Seriously? SDR copy. Oh, uh, I thought I've, I'm, I, I'm defined. Please remind me CRT. C Cure no warnings. Darn it. OK, let's go one more time. A five. Hurry up, hurry up. All right, so it comes over here. Now it wants to convert that. It jumps to the one and simply returns the address out and does the copy. So full name is printed. Not only that, we can do cool stuff. Like we said, say full name. Full name is integer full name or size t. Size t full name characters long. Long. I can do this. I can say, when I cast a string to size t, give me its length. I can do that. How? Again, I'm going to say when the string is casted to a size t, operator size t, const, return the length. Return ut.strlen of mdata. Or actually, I have to do this. I have to say uh, uh, m data question mark 
if it's good like that, otherwise return size t zero. If it's null, it's zero, right? If there is nothing in it. So if it is not null, give me the length. If it is, give me the size t so it doesn't crash on me. So now, as you see, if I actually run the program, it not only does that, but it tells me what is the length, and it's 11 characters long. OK, I forgot to put a space over there. Again, with C++, sky is the limit. You can create anything you want to make your program work properly. But please don't go bananas. OK? Don't cast the integer with it. When I cast it to an integer, I want it to get printed. That doesn't make sense. OK? Although you can overload anything, but make the overload mean what it's supposed to do. Don't go bananas, but do whatever you want to do. I have one more minute. What if I want to do this? So I have the length of it, right? That's that one. So what if I want to do this? What if I want to say for size t i equal to 1 and i less than size t of full name i plus plus I want to say c out full name i I want it to actually act like a I want it to actually act like a uh, a character array. You see it's not giving me an error? Why? Because you overloaded the character, constant character pointer. When it sees like this, it, sees, it can cast it to a constant, so it works. But I didn't want it to work. I wanted to actually overload it. The reason that it works is that I cast it that one. I, I, I fixed this cast. I told you it can have it in two different ways. So I can actually do it like that. I can actually say, so, but this is not safe. If I go size plus 10, this is going to print garbage, right? I don't want that. I, because it's going to go, like if I print it now, if I go like this, it's going to print 10 more stuff that are garbage after what it's actually crashed, I think. So oh, uh, yeah, you see all these dashes over here, two dash stuff. Why did I go to new line? Sorry, I'm taking a minute longer. I'm going to review all these things again. But you see, it's actually printing garbage after. You see that? I don't want that. I want when they go, they're not going to go out of the boundary. So what I can do is simply say over here, I'm going to have a character reference operator index size t index. And I'm not going to make it constant so they can actually change it if they want to. They can actually literally work like an array with it. And in here, I'm going to simply say return m data index divided by size t of this, which means it can, they can never go more than my length. If they put over here 5, 5 mod, mod 11 is 5. If they go 11, 11 mod 11 is 0. It goes back to the beginning. So no matter how far they go, they're going to loop in the, in the array itself. They cannot get out of here. Now if I run it, you will see that it keeps going back. You see? So they frank, so they, it keeps going back because I went more than what I'm supposed to. You can do anything you want, OK? Please go through the notes of operator overloading and all this stuff. And then we're going to do a review when we start the next day. And by the way, in the next day, we're supposed to teach copy constructor and copy assignment. So don't worry. We are not behind. We are not ahead. We're just going to work on this over and over in many different ways and learn it. Have a beautiful day, everyone.